Velocity Network's tonedef.com.au coming to you from Face the Music 2011 and uh, joining me here as we get into the afternoon is Heath Bradbury, A&R for uh, Warner and also uh, you, you are co-founder or founder of the Fidelity um, Corp? I was co-founder, now I'm the sole director. Now you're the sole director, All right, there we go. So how are you today, mate? I'm okay. You doing well? I am. Yeah, and uh, did, you, uh, did you get to Face the Music yesterday? Um, or have you just uh, arrived? Not there? really, I, only, I flew in from Perth at like half past four or something. So. Oh, so you've got the nice three hour uh, 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 jet lag thing I was going. only over there for a couple of days, so it wasn't too bad. So, yeah. But um, no, I just came here for a manager's panel at whatever it was, six o'clock, and then had to go out and do meetings. So yeah, yeah. Not much facing of music for me at all. No, no. Now you've got, uh, you've got a panel discussion coming up at three and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's based on the management of bands, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's the... I can't remember what the official title of it is, but it's basically the management panel. Yeah. Which is run by the AIM, the managers forum. Yeah. Now take us through, take us through, I guess, first, uh, let's start with the Fidelity Corp. Yep. And, and how that was set up and, and what it represents. Um, what it represents or what artists it represents? Well, a, a little from column A, a little from column B. Um, so Fidelity was a partnership between two management companies both based in Perth that we set up in like 05 or something but both of us had been which was me and a partner called Paul Sloan who runs Billions here now um, and we just kind of merged our rosters and stopped being competitors and start being started being partners um, and before that both of us had been running our own companies doing management or my focus was on management his was on promotion for about 10 years or something before that I guess maybe longer probably longer um, and we'd always been in competition but still quite liked each other so I thought we'd see what it was like being on the same side so he had a um, existing roster I had an existing roster and we just put it together then um, I bought him out when I moved to Sydney a couple of years ago so fair enough and uh, how's that all going at the moment um Oh, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, it's busy. What's it, what's what, what's it like when you uh, become the sole owner or something like that? Um, oh, well, I've always been running my own business anyway, so to be honest, it made it simpler and yeah. a lot easier. The so. weight of the responsibility doesn't does it does it nope. increase or no? nope? Well, it doesn't make any difference to be completely honest, because the weight of the responsibility is about the weight of responsibility towards the artists, mm -hmm. the fact that. I was a sole pr proprietor, didn't actually increase that at all because you've always got that responsibility to the artist. So. Mm -hmm. Now, your, your, ba your band management over 17 years, uh, a large part of, uh, of what you were just talking about, did that happen during that time, your management of bands and all that sort um, of stuff? Yeah, well, I've been a manager for 17 years straight, so I guess six or seven of that have been Fidelity. Yeah. I think six or seven, something like that. What are we... Yeah, six or seven. Um, and the rest of it was a different company called Naked Eight, which was my own business. Yeah. Right. So, you know, obviously having been over that period of time, it's been various different acts, but um, actually less of a moving roster than you'd expect because I managed Jebediah for a good 12 years or something, which was um, kind of like this, almost like the single band manager gig for a while, as much as I dabbled in other things. Yeah, as it would be. That's, uh, that's not a bad gig to have. That um, period of time? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was pretty crazy times. We were all kind of making it up as we went along. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the gist of most of the music industry, isn't it? Yeah, apparently. Fake yeah. it to your maker, I yeah. believe. Sorry, Greg, stealing your line. <laughs> now, um, I just wanted, I'm just i just trying to get a bit of chron chronological order here. Fidelity was before Warner? or? Yep. Yeah, yeah I've only been at Warner eight months or something like oh, that. Oh, okay, so yeah. that's real new. How yeah. are you finding that? Um, uh, good. I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, I say actually because I was a little bit trepidatious going into it because it, the, the double gig's pretty brutal because, you know, obviously I work over both businesses all the time and both of them are full-time jobs, so it's pretty brutal. But well, I mean, it's, it must be a great cr uh, credit to your character and your worth, work ethic in order for a major to approach you like that. And I, I guess you... I'm only, uh, you know, speculating here, but you, I'm, I'm assuming you would have said, I need to keep this workload on I've got already, including what you will possibly offer me, so. Um, yeah, I said that, well, basically I said I'm not going to stop being a manager, because I am a manager first and foremost, so well, there's various permutations of how we can work out how I do both, which has included my exceptionally talented wife coming in and taking over the day-to-day -day of the management company. Yeah. Um, 
which has allowed kind of freed me up to be able to do both gigs. But the yeah, I mean, you know, what it was really as long as the communication is really clear, Warners were completely aware of what I needed to keep doing, mm -hmm. and my artists are completely aware of what I'm doing at Warner. And you know, occasionally one will get the shits with the other, but you just kind of hope it doesn't get too bad. And it's a little bit give and take. Well, so. you've made it clear from the start, so nobody should be getting exactly. cranky. Although I did stop Warner from having a number one record after I'd been there for about two months, which is a little controversial, but they took it very, very well. Really? You can't elaborate on that any further? Oh, well... What was the record? Um, they had KD Lang going for number one, I had Draft going for number one, and Draft Oops. got the number one. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> apart from a few rude notes stuck on my door at Warner, it was fine. <laughs> Oh well, there you go. I mean, they, these things happen, and uh, I guess I guess that's what happened when you when you juggle responsibilities as well. Yeah. Hey, it's good to say, hey, it's a good problem to have, right? It could be worse. Yeah, Correct. it could be worse. Absolutely. Um, so what 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 are you looking to uh, I guess take from the questions? Because I, I always ask this to, to the people on the panel. What will you take from the questions that people are asking in the audience, and, and what are you expecting to sort of outlay as far as your information is concerned when you go into this panel discussion on? It's a little bit preemptive because I haven't had the panel yet and, and generally it really depends on what the makeup of the audience is. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, and I'm presuming this one will be pretty good actually, but sometimes with these panels you get asked the same old, you know, how do I send in a demo questions which um, probably someone else could answer. <laughs> um, hopefully there will be some kind of searching and fairly specific yeah. questions um, which will be from a knowledgeable base yeah hopefully yeah well I mean yeah you, you, you did say it right with the question it is preemptive but I, I just often wonder when people uh, people go into panels or keynote speaking sessions whether they formulate how it's how, how that particular session is going to work before you actually walk in there or? not really I mean you get I, I guess you think a little bit about what the current issues are that people might want to talk about and usually there's a little bit of collusion between the people that are talking you know there'll be an email chain or something about what do you guys want to tackle yeah um, and the moderator generally sends through a list which I haven't printed out um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, look, generally with those things, you, you talk a little bit about yourself, you talk a little bit about your experiences and your artist's experiences, and then hopefully you're led to what people want to hear by the questions. I always find the question sessions should be longer at these things, because that's what um, you basically want to be a resource for people to find out what they want to find out. So, yeah. But we'll see. We will see. It's only 45 minutes. Oh, it's not, not much that long. time. That's it. That's it. That's, uh, you're just getting warmed up when you're 10 <laughs> minutes in. All right, well, Heath, thank you very much for joining us here no on, worries. On, the, uh, on, the, on the couches and, uh, or the chairs or whatever you want to call them. Uh, the Fidelity Core, is it, is it the fidelitycore.com.au? .com.au. Uh, yeah. It's just fidelitycorp.com.au. And uh, Not that there's much up there. Warner is Warner. That's pretty easy to find. Yeah. Google um, Warner, something will pop up. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Or go to the, um, the Warner blog, which is actually kind of awesome, which is called Cool Accidents. All right, cool. We'll put that up as well. Cool. Hey, thank you very much for joining us. No worries. Cheers. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, Face of Music 2011 for Rock City Networks and ToneDef.com.au. <laughs>